Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Chrome extension development tutorial. By the end of this video, we will learn how to read and write data using Chrome Storage API. So let us understand what is Chrome Storage API. Chrome Storage API is very simple. It is like your local storage API. With the help of Chrome Storage, we can read or write any data and we can store in our browser itself in the browser storage. And even if we close the browser or even if we refresh the extension or if we get any update, the storage will be remain constant. Until we remove it, it is not going to be removed. So far, we have created this panel.html and we have this panel.js where whatever the X path we are getting from the content script, we are writing that using this document.write. So let me show you. So here if I go back to this any page and if I go back to my let X path, here, once we click on this, we are able to get the X path of that particular selected element. Now, for our learning, what are the X path we are getting? Instead of printing the X path, I'm just going to show like how many X path we are able to find. So, first thing first, we have to get the permissions. So, if I go back to my manifest, and here I can simply say storage. And that's it. Now, if I go back to my content script, And here I will say Chrome dot storage dot local. Now we have this local as well as sync. Local in the sense it's it is going to store our data in the local browser, whereas sync is actually going to sync up with your Google account. So whatever the account we have synced with the browser, in that account it is going to sync up. The advantage in sync is that even even if we are going to switch to any any other browser or any other machine and if you do the sign in it's going to just sync up all our data to the new machine or the browser but i think for our case local is pretty much enough and then of course we are going to use the set here so other than set we have get and clear and few others but we are interested on the set and the get so if i say set and within the set we have to pass the object of data so here i will say len colon and then followed by the x path data dot length so what are the length this x path is going to give us based on that we are storing that in a variable called length so that's it it's very straightforward we have to use this chrome dot storage dot local dot set and within the set we have to pass the object as a data now if i go back to my panel dot js instead of writing the whole data i have to write the length of the data so i'm just going to command this let us use the Chrome storage first. So here I will say Chrome dot storage dot local and from the local, of course, we have to get the value. Now, when we are going to get, we can get multiples data at the same time. So, of course, we have to declare that within the array and here I have to pass the um, object name. So in our case, that is that is going to be this length, right? So I'm just going to copy this length and here I have to give this. Now, this is going to give us a callback. So here I can add this in a callback. And within the callback, I can receive this actual data. So I'm just going to name this as data. And based on this data, I can access all the variables. For example, if we have multiple data, we can receive all the data with this single object. And from the object, we can call each and every data. Now here I'm going to say document dot write. And within the right, I'm just going to pass this the data dot alien length. So that is my actual or the object name. So let us go back to our browser and I'm just going to close this. And of course, we have to do the refresh. And I have to refresh the page. And then if I open my inspect, and here we can see that as soon as we click on this, now it's giving us one. So let me just zoom in. Now here you can see that as soon as we click on this, so this guy is giving like one, two, three, which is not one, two, three. So it's one and two and then three, but this makes confusing. So I'm just going to do some changes here. So if I go back to my panel.html here, instead of this, I'm just going to give an ID to it. Just let us name this as display. And if I go back to panel.js, instead of writing this document.length, I can query that ID. So here I can say, document dot 
get element by id and here i have to pass the display and let us store this in a variable so let and then what are the value we have already i'm just going to clear up using the text content so here i will say display dot text content and that's going to be our empty value and after that what are the value we have received from this data we are going to store that so here i will say data dot length and that's it now if i go back to my browser and refresh this page here now in initially we'll get this as welcome now as soon as i click on this any of the input field so as of now we are getting to x path and if i go back and click on this image you can see that we are able to get this three so this is how we can read and write any data using the chrome storage api i know this is not a very good example so let me show you how i have used the chrome storage api in our final product so i'm just going to close this window and i'm going to remove this here and i'm going to install another extension that is my final version and then if i refresh this page and if i go back to this inspect let me zoom out first okay now if you go back to this config here we can see that we have this plenty of options like what snippets you want you want the selenium protector or uh, selenium c sharp or selenium python or you can also have your custom framework which is in work in progress as of now but these two guys are working now so i have used this chrome storage api internally so that whenever the browser get refreshed or even if the user is going to get um, change between the different snippets it's going to work perfectly for example if i go back to this here we can see that we are able to get this unique id now i can click on the send keys so basically this is our input tag so we can do either the send keys or the get attribute so when when i click on the send keys you can see that we are able to get this like driver.find element by id and then solve followed by the send keys and even if i give like get attribute you can see that we are able to get this get attribute Similarly, if I want to change the snippet to the um, protector, I can just simply go and select here. And then if I go back to my main page, and now if I go back and select something else, let us try to select this one maybe probably. So if I click on the send keys, and here you can see that now we are able to get this element then followed by by.x path. So this is our protector syntax, right? So in this way, we can use the Chrome storage API efficiently to do the uh, local storage stuff i hope this makes sense to you right so that's it from my side i believe you have learned something new in this chrome extension development series and probably in the next video that is going to be my last video on this particular series um, where we learn how to do the deploy and after that i'm going to wind up and that's it from my side see you in the next one very soon Thanks for watching. If you like the video, consider giving a like. And if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe.